What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about a very unique and really cool passive income stream. This is an opportunity for some of you guys to combine an interest and a hobby and a leisure activity into a very real and applicable way to make passive income. Now this is something that I have not seen on YouTube before. I feel like I've never heard anybody talk about. So if you're looking for a way to make some semi-passive income, then this video is for you. So let's get started. Summer is upon us. Tuesday is June 1st, which is crazy to think about. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with summer. The fact is, I live in Dallas, and Dallas gets very, very hot. But despite my love-hate relationship with the heat, there is some really cool opportunities that come along with summertime. Because of the fact that people are out and about, because of the fact that students are out of school, people are on vacation, there is a lot of opportunities to make money. And I think this year specifically, there will be a lot more opportunities because of the fact that the pandemic is now in our rear view mirror and people are ready to relax because they've been pent up for the last year and a half. And that brings me to the side hustle that I want to talk about today. And I want to forewarn you guys, this is a good one. Now, I don't know about you, but I have always wanted a boat. I've always wanted a boat. Since I was a kid, I've wanted a boat. In my mid-20s, I've wanted a boat. In fact, I drive to my sister's house every other week to pick up my niece, and every time I drive past her house, I have to drive by one of the largest lakes in the DFW area, and every single time without fail that I drive to her house, I think to myself, you know what, I should buy a boat. But I also know myself well enough to know that I like the idea of buying a boat more than I actually would like to own a boat. And I know myself well enough to know that I probably wouldn't use that boat a whole lot. But for those of you who have a boat, or for those of you who want to buy a boat, but may not be able to justify the cost and the purchase of that, I have the perfect option for you. And that is peer-to-peer boat sharing. Now you guys have heard of Turo and peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. That's something that's a big focus of this channel. You've heard about Dorsey or RV share, which is RV sharing, which is something that I'm currently working on. You've also heard of Airbnb, which is like peer-to-peer -peer house sharing. But peer-to-peer -peer boat sharing is something that not a lot of people talk about. In fact, I've never heard somebody talk about it on YouTube. But basically how this peer-to-peer -peer side hustle works is for people that either want to buy a boat or people that already own a boat can rent out the boat to their peers for money. The boats can be rented out on an hourly or daily basis, and they actually fetch a lot of money. Now, admittedly, this is a side hustle that seems to be a bit new. It certainly isn't as solidified as Airbnb or Turo or any of those other platforms that have gained popularity over the years, but that doesn't mean that it won't. And as Turo and RV Share and Outdoorsy and Airbnb have gained popularity, I think that there's no real reason to believe that this won't also follow suit as well. Now, there are two popular platforms, at least that I have found, that can host and facilitate the transactions for peer-to-peer -peer boat sharing, similar to what Turo does in car sharing or what RV Share does in RV sharing. And these two platforms are called Get My Boat and Boat Setter. And if we look over at Get My Boat, you can see here that there are a variety of different types of boats that they offer. You have a spacious 25 foot sun catcher on Lake Travis, which is in the Austin area, which is $110 per hour. You have a boat in California, which is a 21 foot pontoon boat for $1,400 per day. You have a like more speed boat style boat that's $695 per day. You have a um, other speedboat style boat, which is $69 per hour, another one $100 per hour. The list goes on and on. And you can see here that there are about 39,000 plus results for this. Now let's look at a specific city. Let's look at Austin, Texas, for example, because there is like Travis in Austin. And because of that, there are a lot of boats that go in and out of the Austin area. And you can see here that in Austin, there's 644 total reviews for this area. And you can see that there are quite a lot of different boats available. You have pontoon boats, you have like a wakeboarding boat, you have um, another pontoon boat, and the list goes on and on. Now let's look at the second platform, which is Boat Setter. And let's look at Austin, Texas again again, just to compare it. So in Austin, Texas, there are 36 boats available. You can see here that this um, like speedboat style boat has 29 trips. This other one has 21 trips, 26 trips, no reviews, no reviews. 
and then the list goes on from here. Now the exact process for how you would go about renting your boat on these two platforms is dependent on what platform you go with as well as what avenue you want to go down. With Boat Sitter, for example, the person who's renting your boat does not have to have a boating license. For example, I could rent your boat and I wouldn't need a boating license in order to do that. But there does have to be a captain involved in the boat rental. And that can either be yourself if you have a boating license, which I would assume you would if you owned a boat, or you could hire one through the Boat Sitter network to go out and be the captain. Now, of course, that would cut into your profit margin, but that would allow for the rental to be more passive if you were to go down that route. And the same goes for the Get My Boat platform. You do have to get a captain to be involved with the rental as well, but the exact structure of how that works on Get My Boat isn't as clear on the website as it was on Boat Setter. Though in both scenarios, you would have to have somebody who is a boat licensed individual to actually drive the boat as it's being rented out. Now, the cool thing about both of these platforms is that you not only have the ability to rent out real physical boats like speed boats or pontoon boats, you also have the ability to rent out jet skis as well. And in my research, I also found that you could potentially rent out like manual boats like kayaks or canoes as well, though they are, I would say, probably less popular than the like motor version of a boat. Now, the way that this could work is I think two different ways. Number one, you can take advantage of this type of side hustle if you're somebody that has a boat and you enjoy your boat, but you don't use it a whole lot. This is something that I've found to be very common with like any boat owner that I know. I feel like everybody I know that owns a boat falls into one or two categories. They're either somebody that like loves their boat and they spend the entire summer on their boat, or they're somebody who owns a boat but very rarely uses it. And as a result, it is sitting in their driveway 95% of the year. I think that this type of side hustle is perfect for that individual. The person who likes to have their boat, they use it every once in a while, but they don't use it enough to justify the cost. And in this instance, you could rent out your boat a few days a year to not only justify the cost, but to potentially pay for the cost of ownership for the boat as a whole. I mean, if we look on Facebook Marketplace, you can see a handful of boats. And of course, the amount of money that you can make with the side hustle would be dependent on what type of boat you have, how nice that boat is, what you price it at. But there's a lot of options, even on platforms like Facebook Marketplace. I mean, you have an $18,000 boat here, which admittedly is a lot of money. You have a jet ski for $4,100. You have a, another boat for $9,500. You have a, um, another boat, a pontoon boat for $9,000. The list goes on and on. Now, in addition to you know the traditional boats that we've talked about so far, I think another really great route that you could go down with this business model is fishing boats. And this is something that I didn't touch on and we didn't see on the Get My Boat platform, but there are a lot of people out there that love to fish and they do so from the shore of a lake or from a body of water. And to be able to offer a boat to these individuals, even for them to rent every once in a while on a special occasion, I think that there is a very real market for that. So not only do you have the ability to potentially cater to parties, to people that just want to be out on the water, but also to people that want to fish. And so you're able to get a wide range of different customers. And I think that the fishing aspect is one of the ways that you can turn this side hustle into a full time, full year round thing. Now I will admit there are some very real risks and downsides to this type of side hustle. In fact, this is something that my fiance and I have been talking about potentially doing. As you guys know, we have a Turo fleet. We're currently building out a van, which will be rented out on Outdoorsy. If you guys are interested in continuing to follow the progress of that van build, we did start a second channel and all the van videos from here on out will be featured on that second channel. So if you want to check that out, make sure to subscribe. A van video is coming very, very soon, so you don't want to miss it. But we've kind of been throwing around the idea of adding boat rentals into our peer-to-peer -peer sharing fleet. And for us, there are a handful of concerns that I think could be valid concerns for you guys. Number one is the fact that people inherently abuse things that aren't theirs and people are irresponsible with things that aren't theirs. In the case of a boat setter or get my boat, at least there's a captain who's driving the boat, which is nice. 
but there is still the risk of people damaging the boat. And I believe that in most cases, fixing a boat is going to be more expensive than fixing a car, especially if you're somebody that isn't super familiar with boats, like my fiance and I are, for example, we don't really know a ton about boats. The second thing is the fact that this is definitely a seasonal passive income stream. It's going to probably kill it in the summertime and then the rest of the year it kind of dies down and it's not as much of a money maker. This is definitely something that is a big negative, especially when you compare it to other side hustles out there that are all year round. And the third concern, and this is the biggest for HP and I, is the passivity of this type of income stream. With a hustle like Airbnb or Turo or even RV share, there is a passive aspect of it. With Turo, we do all of our key exchanges remote, meaning we don't meet any of the guests. With our V share and our Dorsey, we plan on having the guests come to us and then we will like hand off the RV to them at that point. But with Boat Setter or Get My Boat, you have to drive to the lake with the boat and then you have to hand off the boat. And then once the user is done with the boat, you have to go back to the lake and then you have to pick up the boat. And so because of this, I think that this business model is significantly less passive. With that being said though, I do think that there is a way to make this business model passive. And this is kind of what I'm thinking about with my own business model. Like, could we make this business model passive? Could we rent out a dock space and just leave the boat at the dock? Could we hire somebody to work for us part-time that would drive the boat on the weekends? How could we get this business model to be a little bit more passive? That way HP and I wouldn't have to go to the lake and drop the boat off and then facilitate the transaction and then drive the boat ourselves. This is something that I'm thinking of myself, you know, for us, we live about 45 minutes from the closest lake. And so it's a little bit more challenging, but for those of you that live closer to a body of water, or you have the ability to go to a body of water relatively quickly and easily, or if you're somebody that already has a boat, I think that this type of side hustle is a really, really unique, a really great opportunity. And it's one of the like best ways to combine a passion and a joy of yours into a very real applicable way to make money. But with that being said, you guys, I hope that you found this video interesting. I have not heard peer-to-peer -peer boat sharing talked about on the internet, so I thought this would be a very interesting and entertaining topic to cover. If HP and I end up doing this type of side hustle, which we don't know if we will, we probably won't at this point, but maybe once things settle a bit on our end, we would look at exploring this. But if we end up doing it, we will be outlining it on our second channel, which is Aubrey and HP. That's our dual channel, which is more of a vlog style channel. And it shows you guys what we're doing on a day to day basis to grow our wealth. And so if you're interested in checking that out, make sure to subscribe to that. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, then make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.